This is Twit. So last week on Windows Weekly, we were bemoaning the fact that we've heard nothing from Microsoft lately about PWAs. It seemed like it was super exciting that they were all in on it, and then there just was nothing. I'm and secretly believing things. that uh, my support of PWAs is what killed it. Is that it? Yeah, because if I any any time I love technology yeah. too much, yeah. it dies. You and know, me too. I love it Amiga, too. I'm so excited. It by just, it. I kill. I, I'm the killer of things. So, so you. But no, this week you've been the the uh, unveiler of things. Oh, the unveiler of things. There's good. Yeah, news. yeah, yeah, yeah. So. All right, so let me just rifle through these real quick, and then we can kind of go back and, and go through a little more deeply. Because it was really interesting to watch this kind of happen in real time. Um, I saw a report that on Twitter. Someone on Twitter said, hey, I'm getting this prompt in Outlook.com that's letting me configure a Gmail account. Now, don't confuse this with you can go in and forward your, you know, your Gmail to Outlook.com. It's literally you have an Outlook.com account, and you have a Gmail account. You can switch between them. Like you can send and receive mail. Gmail f using the Outlook.com account. It even integrates with the calendar, Google Calendar, uh, Contacts, and um, Google Drive. Interesting. Now, I'm not seeing it. In fact, I'm still not seeing it. But that that flipped a switch in my brain because I had gotten, I, ha I have been saying for a while now, if Microsoft could just turn Outlook.com into a PWA, that wonderful web Ooh. application could replace the terrible mail application that's yeah. built into Windows 10. Yeah. To which people retort very logically, well, that's not possible, Paul, because Outlook.com, the website, the web app, is only for Outlook.com email. There's no way to configure multiple accounts. Oh, but now there is. Yeah. yeah. My reply to that has been, but that's an arbitrary design. They could design Outlook.com so that it could connect to other accounts. Yep. And now it looks like they're testing Indeed it. Okay, so yes. neat. But then in very yep. rapid succession, <laughs> I got an email from someone who said, hey, I'm using Outlook on the web. This is the uh, Office 365 commercial version of Outlook.com. And I'm using Brave, that web browser you guys were talking about last week. And I just got an install prompt in the, in the uh, address bar. And that install prompt only appears when you have a PWA. Yeah. I thought, well, that's really interesting. That's what that means. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I, yeah. So I looked at it in, in um, the Edge beta, and I did not see the install uh, button. But that's because I'm running the beta. If I was running Canary, I would have seen it. And it's coming, obviously, it's coming. It's it's there. It is there. It's just that the beta version can't see it or it doesn't work properly. Um, and then, I now I'm, so of course, now I'm looking at Outlook.com. Is Outlook.com going to switch over? Sure enough, uh, you also now get, it was a day later, I think this prompt now appears also in Outlook.com. So Microsoft is turning these things into PWAs. Now, there are no special PWA features like offline use or whatever, but they've done the, you oh, know. Well, the, is it really a PWA if you can't? Use it offline. Uh, that's yes, going to be coming, though, right? Yeah, that's going to uh, be. Because yeah, you would probably. think. Yeah. I mean, I mean otherwise, yeah. it's just a, a window to a website. Yeah. Yes. Right, of course. But the point is they've done the work to do that. So now that the manifest is there, now that they have the basics, uh, the what I would call the minimum to qualify as a PWA, mm -hmm. all those other things are possible. So we'll see what happens. But anyway, the point is they're, it's, they're, go they're doing it. Like after – Yeah years, you know, months yep. of silence, certainly. And then there was a Microsoft, how did this one? Oh, no. So someone in the, in the Microsoft tech community, which is like an online forum, said, hey, I, and God knows how people find these things, but he's like screwing around with the flags and the canary version of Edge. And he's like, I found this uh, flag that appears to make some changes with the way PWAs work. And a Microsoft engineer actually replied to him, apologized for not documenting it yet because huh? he said, we're a little bit behind. Uh but he says, yeah, we're... We're actually making change uh, to, the changes to the way this works. <laughs> Would you yep. uh, now the chat room is saying what is a PWA? Perhaps we've launched oh, into geez. this without explaining. We've talked about it quite a bit, but you know, not everybody. Yeah. Partly confusing also because of WP. Yeah, it? UWP. 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 PWA. Yeah. PTA. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> Guys, PITA. You know, the tech web class, uh, but, uh, the podcast. We're going to use acronyms. So yeah. uh, PWA is a progressive web app. Using web technologies, yeah, like website, JavaScript, ultimately, yep. yeah, that has a um, uh, it is basically a standard by which this website can appear to look like and work like a native app on platforms that support it. Uh, Android and Windows 10 natively support PWAs. Um, you typically acquire them through a browser. There'll be some kind of an install experience, like the one I just described. Microsoft has added the capability to install them through the Microsoft Store. 
So the Twitter web, app, the Twitter app in the Windows Store, the Microsoft Store, is actually a PWA. Um, Google has said that they will do so for Android as well. Um, Samsung supports them in its own browser and on uh, its phones. Um, Apple is going down that path a little more slowly because obviously Apple has a big foot in the you know the native app experience on uh, on iOS especially, but also on the Mac. But you know you could run Chrome on the Mac or the new Edge on the Mac and get these PWAs as well. So it's it's um, and then there's a list of native experiences that you can add. So the two big ones in my mind are offline use, which you know for an uh, email app is somewhat important. I mean, you know, obviously when you're sending and receiving emails, you're online typically. For an app like Twitter, it's same thing. You know, you pretty much want to be online to use it. But you can imagine, you can make a PWA of anything. It could be a, a task app. It could be a game. It could be whatever. Twitter, in fact, is the PWA most people are familiar with because mm. they've been doing that for a long time. Yeah. And they, you might not even realize that's what it is. Right. You know? Right. Like the, the Office app, you know, when you, when you go to office.com and you can see your most recent files, that's a PWA also. The new Microsoft the, the, the one that's in the store, the Windows 10 app. Yeah. 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 Right. So when, so, I, uh, other, when I'm other, on uh, Twitter.com, I should be able to install it. There should be a menu that's right. item that's there is. Uh, if, you go, if you don't see it, go to mobile.twitter.com. Oh, okay. Okay. So, uh, but the other, the other main one that I can think of, the other important thing is native uh, notifications. So in other words, um, web apps like websites can pop up notifications, but they're browser notifications they're whatever the browser you're using you could do something really screwy by the way if you wanted to i've done this i mean you could have chrome you could have the new edge you could have brave you could go to the same website on all three of them install that thing as an app and then have three different versions of the app they should all look identical but they're running on a different back end mm -hmm. right the different browser so the thing microsoft's doing in windows 10 in some future release is they're going to enable more uh, low level. Oh, I'm sorry. I didn't say the other thing. Uh, the other new feature, the other feature I think that's important is uh, native notifications. So if you have like um, Outlook.com as a PWA and you have a new email, the notification that will pop up will be a Windows 10 notification on Windows 10, right? It won't be in like a browser notification. It will be, it will look just like and work just like every other notification that you get natively. So it's like for all intents and purposes, this thing is a native app. So this right. is the so I just did that in Brave. I went to mobile.twitter.com. I got the little install thing in Brave. It shows up in the URL yep. bar, and this is mm -hmm. it. And so this is a standalone application that uh, yep. is Twitter. I mean, yeah. yep. what, so but the, it's right once run everywhere, or right, right once run everywhere, uh, whatever the term was. But uh, <laughs> so, I mean, how is this different than just a, a, a frame into Twitter in the browser? Yeah. So for Twitter, it's probably not that different. But you have to understand that the, the benefit of this for Twitter and also for users, but is they only have to do this thing once, right? The, the world of just a few years ago was you needed a different team or a different set of people making a Windows app, a Mac app, a Linux app if you did it, an Android app, an iOS app. One of the beauty, one of the nice things about uh, PWAs is that you can write that app once and it's going to work everywhere. Yeah. It's the same app. You don't write little... There are actually there will eventually be things for for certain native features because there will be native features that only work or make sense on Windows that maybe you don't support on other platforms or whatever like jump list. But uh, for the most part, it's not about you know if then blocks like if it's on iOS do this if it's on you know you don't have to worry about that stuff. It's just you know it's a web app. It will work and look and be the same everywhere. Yeah. And there are huge benefits to that. Yeah. Um, also, you know, just from a deployment perspective or like an updating perspective. Um, and this benefits the users if they discover a problem and they update that thing. It's not you don't have to uh, uninstall a version, reinstall, or in install an update, or go through. You know, it, it, this is happening for you in the background. You don't have to worry about it. So, what would be the so, difference between an Outlook.com PWA and an Outlook yeah. for the web PWA? Nothing. It's just the audience they're targeting. So okay. those so the two functionality apps are is the same. Well, basically, I mean, there probably are differences because Outlook on the web is for commercial customers, and there'll be business features built right. into that that you right. won't see in Outlook.com. Right. But that would so uh, in other words, at some point, we might have the entire Office suite as well, yes, a this has been the that was the rumor, right? Wasn't that the rumor yeah. a year ago? They were going to turn everything in the Office into a PWA. So the thing that you're right. So remember, they there for a while they worked on these mobile apps, uh, the the ones you could get yeah. in the store, and they were they were yeah. kind of offshoots of the work that Microsoft had done previously to bring mobile Office to first to Windows Phone, uh, 
And then, of course, there's iOS and Android versions as well. And so you could run that thing on full Windows. It was a subset of the full capability of the, yeah. the main uh, apps, as it would be. Um, but the problem, I think, was that just that the under uh, the underlying technology that was available to those apps was not powerful enough to you know for this right. to make a ton of sense. Plus, the phone thing failed. I think that played a, a, yeah. a role in that. And they too. put they put those apps in maintenance mode basically now, right? Like they're not doing anything yeah. with those anymore. Right. So, so a yeah. web app version of Word, Excel, PowerPoint, and whatever other apps, you know, One One Note, whatever, nope. um, yeah. is probably good enough for most users. So I it, just went to office.com, opened Outlook, and I'm getting an install button. Yeah, in Brave, you will. Yep. So it is now a PWA, yep. officially. Right. Yeah. No, it's... it's, a, a, it's it, but not not in, not in the new Edge, right? Like, you're not seeing that yet. If you're in Canary, you will uh, see it. You don't okay. see it in beta. So okay. Chrome and Brave, you would see it. Uh, I don't know about Safari. But in other words, that's more a browser an issue of browser capabilities than what Microsoft has done. They've made this a PWA now. This is Yeah, yeah. It's a yeah. basic PWA, right? Like I said, it doesn't support any special features. It's just me making or meeting the minimums. But that's yeah. okay because that's the step. Now now we know they're doing it, you know? Yeah. So eventually right. we'll probably see these additional capabilities added. 